All right, so welcome to this guide of how to approach Neo 2 when it gets released. And I'm taking the chance of uh, this demo, the last chance trial, to demonstrate a bit of what to do. So, <clears throat> yeah, what is up, James, by the way? I'm doing this on stream, so this is why I'm doing some commentary like this. Anyways, I really don't like a lot of Neo 1 and a lot of within the possibilities of doing the demos of Neo 2. And I believe I can give you lots of hints and uh, tips to help you through the game. So let's get into it. So first thing first, don't like for everyone who's coming from the Souls games, don't take it as a Souls like because it's not it's not supposed to be a Souls like or anything like that. Okay, so on right here you have like a lot of options and whatnot. You can make your character higher you want. Um, you can save uh, all the different characters you have made here as well. You know you can see right there. It's my version of Zoro as well. And then you can also uh, create uh, a code for it and you can share it. And then those codes, you can put it here and you can basically, uh, as you can see right here, I got this three right here from, from Bunny and Fatih. And I didn't make any of this. So yeah, you can use them. <clears throat> but yeah, that's like nothing, nothing to get into too much, right? So let's get into the actual things. As you may know, in Neo you have three stances. You have low, mid, and high. And then you can also shift. So yeah, as you can see, like, it changes the stances, but right now we don't have any weapons. So in order to notice a difference with, within the stances, you need to get the weapon. I'll get the sword to demonstrate things easier, more easily. All right. So as you can see right here, quick attack, you know, regular things. And then as you can see, it builds up some kind of meter right there, and it gets uh, it fills up again, and then it disappears. So what? How? What's that mechanic right there? So as you can see right here, I can just recover all of it after attacking, or maybe just a part of it after attacking, if you want to cut it shorter. So that's a key pulse. You can see right there that I was using the R1. Then of course you have the strong attack for all stances and whatnot. You know, different things, mid stance. Those are the basic attacks. This is low stance again. High stance. So yeah, those are very basic things. But that's a skill right there. Right there I did um, Morning Moon. It's basically a combo modifier. There are other skills like this one. Sun of the Cross. I mean, not Sun of the Cross, that's from those uh, Yeah, I Quick Draw. I, I'm doing some cancels, but you know, normally it would be like this. And then this. You know, basically unsheathing attack. But by doing this, with, you know, moving forward a bit, I cancel the shooting animation. But you know, don't get caught in that. Let's let's uh, learn more about skills. So you know, as long as you use the weapons and whatnot, like you know, look at the skills right here. Morning Moon, Leaf Glide. You can see what it does, in what stance, with what inputs, and in what conditions. So that's all good, right? But there's this thing right here, flux. So it won't happen right now. 
But when you activate Flux, when you learn Flux, this thing right here. See, like I only recover that. I would recover even more. So it's really useful to uh, to regain a lot of key. So yeah, I'll I'll show you later when when we actually get flux. But yeah, that's basically the the basic part of the combat. You know, get used to the different stances. Each one has its own strengths. If you want to go fast and use dash 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 and do quick attacks. You use low stance, mid stance is good for defense, and instead, like you can dash, but if you just mash it, you dash into a row. Same thing as if you were, let's let's say, like right now I'm on low stance, quote unquote low stance, but I don't have the weapon out, it's shift. So if I try to do the same thing, I do the same thing as a as a as a low uh, as a mid stance. You know, I dash into the row. I take it out and I start dashing. And on high stance, you just roll. So, for the different evasions, um, I recommend using mainly the low stance evasion, you know, the dash, whatnot. But sometimes you'll want to have a bit more iframes. And rolling does give you a bit more iframes. So, uh, that's gonna be good if you want. Also, you have running attacks, rolling attacks, dashing attacks, all of that good stuff, okay? And each uh, stance has its own running attack and uh, dash attack. Well, more or less. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's pretty much it in terms of moveset and whatnot, apart from, you know, getting more into skills. Um, there's also the equipment and whatnot. You have two main weapons that you can select. I'm gonna get the second one right now. Uh, let's go with this one, for example, the Switch Glaive. So yeah, as you can see right here, R1 plus down, you change weapons. So yeah, Swiss Glaive has a very distinct way to, to show the stances by transforming a weapon. Alright. So now we have two weapons. You know, right here, two weapons. Uh, later on we'll get uh, more ranged weapons as well, but yeah, basically the ones that you equip right here are the ones that you you can switch by R1 plus uh, down, and then for the ranged weapons it's R1 plus up, but it, um, you know, right now we don't have any. Uh, armor, I cannot get rid of it right now because I'm in special area where it doesn't let me for whatever reason. But yeah, armor with its special effects. Uh, right now this is on... So you can see right here in status, agility, you know, equipment weight and agility is B. That's the green. So it goes blue, green, yellow, and then red. By uh, 30 or lower, it's uh, blue. From, uh, from there to uh, 70, that's green. And then until 100, that's uh, yellow, and over 100 is red. I would suggest to keep it uh, e either green or blue. I personally prefer blue, you know, below, you know, 30 or below. But, you know, up to everyone. <clears throat> you can customize the skills right now, like right here. As you can see, uh, if I had more skills, I could change them between the different ones. I'll later show it with, um, with a different save file. But yeah, keep in mind all of that. Then you have accessories, the shortcuts, Guardian Spirit stuff. So yeah, speaking of all, about Guardian Spirit, you have uh, Feral right here. 
is a speed based patience on fast attacks you you can do a charge attack right here and it will home into the nearby enemy and deal quite a bit of damage and you can do this special the yukai shift skill to attack with the guardian spirit this is the yukai counter that you can also do right here you get counter will be useful later, and I'll show it better later as well. <clears throat> this is Brute. Brute specializes a bit more on heavy attacks. And countering, that's... Um, the, feral count the Brute counter is slower, but it does hit a bit more, and it has more uh, counter frames. This is like a um, so R1 plus triangle. I don't really use it much, but um, that's a, a parry. You can counter um, Jokai moves with that. I'll show it later as well. Special, the same thing. Then you have Phantom. No. Then you can shoot it. Then the special right here. This is the, the counter. This is like a defense one. But I personally prefer this one. Anyways, you'll get used to them. Um, I prefer the Feral one just because it's fast and it's good. <laughs> I don't know. It's really good. Um, so yeah, I'll show a bit more with the Jokai shift right here. So yeah, burst counters and burst attacks, as you can see. I'll let him attack and then do a burst counter. And then, since uh, it got rid of all the key, I was able to do the... Um, as you can see right there, the grapple with the Yokai shift. Um, fun fact, uh, you can actually do that with uh, bosses as well, uh, but it will be pretty hard to do, like... <sighs> I'll show it again, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can shift right here, what we saw before. Okay, so you saw right there, like it got rid of all the key. But then you ha you see that second bar. Okay, so Jokai have two two levels on the key bar in the in Neo Two. That doesn't happen in Neo One. But basically, when you get rid of all the key, the first key bar, uh, you can stagger. You can stagger the, the the Yokai or not, and you can actually keep staggering him and lower the second bar. And then when the second bar is completely down, they will get uh, in a repostable state. Uh, for small yokai, that won't really be um, any kind of extra mechanic or anything like that. Like uh, for small yokai, you will get the same thing pretty much uh, if you get rid of all the first one and on the second one. But with bigger yokai and yokai bosses, you will eventually want to get that uh, second bar down and do a, um, a repost animation with a dagger. Or if you manage to get it down with a Yokai Burst or, or Yokai Shift, you know, Counter Burst or the Yokai Shift, then you will also be able to do the, um, 
the grapple with a uh, yokai shift. So yeah, those uh, mechanics. Okay. As you can see right here, the grapple. That's the yokai shift grapple that I was talking about. And as you can see right here, okay, well, uh, um, okay, I don't know what he wanted me to do. Well, yeah, this is like the shadow steps so or not. Those are like uh, the things that uh, he was saying. You can dodge while attacking, and then you can continue with another attack. It's like uh, the combo. I'll show, I'll quickly show the other ones. right there as the counter you know the skill right now oh yeah um brute is like high stance it doesn't have any kind of flash or anything it's just uh, the fucking roll. Okay, should grapple. Easy peasy. Same thing, by the way. Pretty much. And then we get to the special skill. And that's the counter for the... For the brute. You know, this thing that I did right there, that's the counter, you know, the, the parry skill. Otherwise, while well, you're, you're on human form or even on on the other, you know, the Yukashi form, you can do this. And that's the boss counter, but it, it's not, it, it only works for boss counter attacks. Um, if you try to counter an, a regular attack with it, it will not work. Okay, let's do this one. And then we'll proceed. Okay, this one is like more immediate. I'm not used to this one at all. But yeah, that's the one. It's it's a bit more tight than Feral. Yeah, the skill. This one has stashes. So yeah.
So yeah, that's all the the yokai shift stuff. I wonder if they're all gonna add more eventually, but uh, I don't think so. Okay, uh, the basic controls we can do it uh, on the on the air games. So let's uh, let's just go. All right. So I think I can do, I can get a level or two. At the start. And then I can show the, the thing. So right here, uh, as I was explaining before, equipment weight, I removed one thing and now I'm blue weight. And if I were to have more stuff to equip, then I would eventually get, uh, instead of green, it would be like yellow and then red. So, small speed stones give you Amrita and also um, give you Amrita meter for the Yukai shift you know, to trigger it. As you can see right there, I have like a one, you know. Like uh, next to the HP, a key bar, and anima bar. Half of one. And that's the. The thing. Ah, uh, okay. Um. I don't know, maybe I can. I can level up with this. I didn't pay attention to how many. But yeah, as you can see right now, I have a 22. All right. So now I got one samurai skill point. And um, yeah, before getting it, I'll actually show you guys, like right now, this is what happens when I do flex without using flex, like without having it, I mean. That's what happens. Okay. And now I get flux one. As you can see, much faster. And funny thing is that if you do this, it recovers a bit more. As you can see right there, I recovered it in two, in two things. Like I changed, basically, instead of just changing to one stance, I changed to two stances. So that's pretty useful. Anyways, let's see. Um, let's talk about skills. What skills do you want to use with the sword? One skill that you want to use with the sword is the Morning Moon. But keep in mind that it's, uh, it takes a while. Like, uh, and you're, as soon as you start uh, the Morning Moon, you're locked into, into the, the attack. But it's a good damaging attack. Sword of Meditation is mainly a meme. You can make use of it, but uh, it's mainly just to be suave. Sort of celerity is pretty good. Um, you need sword key, like right here. Sword key is pretty good for key damage. Yeah, a quick draw, really, really good for spacing and doing a lot of, uh, uh, of damage on one attack. And you have like a, the pow more powerful version of EI. And then being able to chain into an EI faster tiger sprint is a bit of a meme as well you can make use of it but uh, it's not as useful as the other one knife run is pretty useful but i prefer ei quick throw personally uh soul swing is good for uh getting away at the end of a combo as you can see right there 
This attack is pretty powerful. Flowing Shadow. Shadow Sword, I've never used it, honestly. So I don't know how good it is. But yeah, these ones are not main skills, so to speak. And Flash, pretty good. Pretty good. Sweep Step, uh, if you don't like Heaven's Flash, you can do that one. But keep in mind that whenever you're... If you're attacking and then uh, you want to dodge past an enemy, like forward, uh, if you're on low stance and you're attacking and you do that, you're gonna do one of these two skills if you have them. So yeah, keep that in mind. Sometimes it can be annoying. Um, I mean, if you want to dash past, then you know that this one is good, I guess. Kick, pretty useful for key damage. Left glide, so uh, just starting parry, same as this. Tempest, pretty good. Back wave, even better. Because it can follow up with Tempest. Haste 2, that's an actual parry, like where you actually do a follow up attack. Same one with Water Shadow. Two. Yeah, those are pretty much the important skills for dual souls, for example. Um, Windstorm is good for combos, but uh, if you want to, like, the bad thing is that you need to pick in between Windstorm or Water Sword, and Water Sword does a lot of damage uh, while staying still. And it applies a lot of element, especially if it's Water Sword 2. So, depends. If you want to get it into combos, uh, Windstorm 2 is pretty good. If you want to use them as your main source of damage or your main strat, then Water Sword 2 is better. Cherry Blossom, pretty straightforward uh, combo. Uh, it has hyper armor. But um, yeah, don't get too excited because you might die because of it. Sound of the Cross, just like EI Quick Draw, but even better because you can actually speed it up. Raijin, pretty okay skill, pretty cool. You can uh, hold it um, longer or shorter depending on how much you want to charge it up. Man's Eye, really, really useful. It gives you extra iframes when uh, on low stance. Dual Dragon, pretty cool, and it, it does quite a bit of damage for how, low, uh, for, for how flashy it is, I guess. Man's Eye 2, basically the same thing as Man's Eye, but you get an extra boost in damage. Mortal Flow, pretty all right. Mortal Flow 2, same but better. God of Wind, really useful, especially for God of Wind 3, where you actually time the follow-up of the kick, and then you get like a lot of, uh, a really good uh, skill that does a lot of key damage. This one's pretty good against humans, but um, sometimes it can get you killed. I remember that from Neo 1. Demon Thrust is a really, really meh skill. Really, really meh. Random Slice... Meh. Pretty meh. <laughs> Person Wheel, a uh, new skill, pretty garbage. Heavenly Flow, good parry. Earthly Flow, good parry with uh, that works against Yokai. But you know, the Shrike is a good parry with uh, humans. So you eventually, you start with Heavenly Flow and then you will get the Shrike for humans. And then if you want to do some counters, counter attacks with, um, against the Yokai, or you know, just regular enemies without actually parrying, then you can do Early Flow. Just remember, it's better to do Yokai Burst if uh, they're doing one of those attacks, the Red Flash attacks. Okay, let's see, I think I got everything for to sort 
Yeah, I'm not gonna cover the in the in the passive skills, the blue ones. I'm talking more about the uh, active skills. Now let's talk about Kusarigama. Okay, with Kusarigama, um, straight away, if you want to be broken, if you want to do like one main strat against Yokai, especially Reaper. Reaper is really strong, and Summer Toilet is a really good buff as well. Uh, if you want to cheat some human enemies, or you know, maybe even when they drop PvP, if they drop PvP, on you know. Then blade spin is good to cheese like that. Um, I haven't used these two buffs. Um, they could be all right, but I think more damage is better. <laughs> Serpent strike, um, it's whatever. Foot sweep can be pretty useful against humans. Glimson fury, yeah, good for combos. But, um, you know, it's better to do Reaper. Bird of Prey, pretty cool, but you're not gonna use it much. Waterfall, Parry, pretty cool. Masterful Guard is like a back wave. Black Binds, okay. Whirlwind. All right. This one's just weird. <laughs> Rene Dragon, pretty cool, good for combos. But yeah, I remember it takes quite a bit. Tangle Shrike, not great, not great. Retreating Strike is like the the one from the from the sword, but not as good. <laughs> Chain pool, pretty cool against humans. Leaping strike, pretty pointless. <laughs> uh, did I forget any? I don't think I did. Let's talk about axe. With the axe, heaven and earth, really good, but like really good damage and key damage. But it does, it can get you killed pretty easily. It takes a lot of key, so yeah, careful with it. But it's a good damaging attack. Lumber Chop, useless, pretty much. Roman Earth, useless, pretty much. Mud Spinner, um, it can be really powerful. But you know. Uh, Titanic Strength, really good, it's like... Uh, Pretty much like Heaven and Earth, but uh, without the combo, just uh, one skill. Mm. Mud Spinner 2, even better Mud Spinner. Remember, uh, this attack can get you killed really easily, but it can also be really, really strong. So if you want to go YOLO, that's your skill. Uh, Burst Bane is pretty alright. Not the best. Rampage is pretty good against humans. Cloud Crush, it's good for combos. <laughs> when, when I say it's good for combos is that if you want to be swag and, and stuff, like they are useful skills that are not OP, but you know, they are cool for combos. Earth Carver, pretty useless. Um, South Pole, not great. Roar, um, honestly, I've never used that one. <laughs> As like, like a counter move, not too great. Try spark, it's pretty all right. Stone mallet, just like the other one, the, the roar. Elementary, I never used it. Rage, I did use it. It's pretty cool buff, but uh, yeah, careful with the key usage. Oh yeah, this is I uh, never used that buff either. I just used the damage buffs. <laughs> okay, so that pretty much covers the axe. 
I'm trying to be fast and not taking too much time. Piercing Rain. It leaves you wide open, but it's really good uh, attack if you, if you don't die by it because of it. Um, it can give a lot of uh, elemental damage, and uh, yeah, it's just good. A spear fall, really good to make people fall, slamming them into the ground. But it does replace um, piercing rain. Spear flourish. Um, it's a bit. It's a bit of a question mark because it can be useful for sure but it can also prolong your uh, basically it can it can make you die because you take so long to keep balls with this skill so yeah um, it's useful but it can it can be annoying because you're trying to keep balls uh, you can flex into low stance to dodge away and you're doing this animation. Yeah, you, you get stuck on this animation. And yeah, and sometimes that's not what you want. Twisting Spear, pretty good for spacing, but um, overall not a super useful skill. Tornado is really useful, actually. Really useful. Uh, Spear Shove, pretty cool. Um, when they are like turtling, you know, the human enemies, you can do, use this and it's pretty good. Chidori, cool for combos. And it does actually do quite a bit of damage, but not that useful against Yokai. <laughs> okay, I never used this skill actually. Um, I won't comment on it. Looks cool. But it's a new skill that I, and I, I never got to actually use it. Rising Dragon, um, it's okay. If you if you were planning to get knocked down. <laughs> Merciless Barrage. It's kind of like a Chiori, useful against humans. And yeah, useless against Yokai, pretty much. Flying Monkey, useful for skips in Neo 1. Flying Monkey 2, pretty much. But, um, I mean, yeah, it has uses, but it's much like Swag strats where you dodge with, uh, with the attack rather than actually dodging normally. So, yeah, it's cool, but I don't think it, it has a lot of uses casually. Backslash. Uh, really, me really, really meh skill. Like not good. I like I wouldn't use it. And yeah, this is. Remember what I was talking about about uh, the skills about uh, going forward and whatnot. This one's like more. I don't know. It's it, some some things can actually get into the way. Like you want to do something. And then the skill triggers, and that's not what you wanted to do. So careful with that. Spear Bash, pretty all right, not great. Well, Spear is like the random slice version of uh, Spear. Ball Kick, useful for key damage. Body Swap, useful against humans. Like, Spear has a lot of uses against humans, but then you find it's not super useful overall in against Yokai. Same thing here, like this this is a good attack. But it's mainly designed for humans. Tangle, the same thing as the Kusarigama. Twirl, uh, the parry for humans again. So Spear is really good against humans. And it, obviously it is not like it, you cannot use the spear against Yokai. But it's just that many of the skills of the spear are designed for humans. Uh, so you will have less skills against your guy with the spear. Alright, let's see. Let's do Odachi. So Odachi, Twin Moons. Twin Moons is really, really standard. It's gonna pretty much be your bread and butter. 
just like a the morning mode pretty much with a sword. Twin mods is a really good skill uh, to do a lot of damage on high stance really quick. There's hidden rush for spacing, all, all of those charge uh, attacks that mm, that lead you forward, that, those are good for spacing. Ground Quake, pretty alright for combos, not super great, but yeah, you know, it's pretty cool, it's, it's useful. Imperative eh, Strive, Strike, yes, the EI skill of, uh, of the Odachi, pretty cool. And useful, yes, indeed. It's just that uh, within, it's not as good with the Odachi compared to the Sword and Dual Sword, because it's a bit slower, and it doesn't propel you forward as much. So yeah, keep that in mind. Clarity, a buff. Um, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. I never use it personally, but. You know, it can be useful, I guess. This is a new move, um, and I haven't tested it, actually. I should test it later. Uh, I'll put some comments later uh, when I test it uh, from the video, and then I'll give you uh, the insights of it. Okay, so Odachi has these uh, skills where they transcend from one sense to another one. Some of them can be useful. Uh, I just personally don't really like the transition attacks from the Odachi. I like the transition attacks from the Switch Glaive though. We'll get to we'll get in those later. Sunset Breeze, the same thing, another transition attack. Tiger's Blade. As as always, look careful with the input for you know low stance combo into going forward with the dash. But it's actually really damaging and useful skill if you if you don't have issues with uh, what I just said. Retrograde Flow, it's pretty all right. You can do quite a bit of damage, uh, especially, I mean, quite a, bit, quite a bit of key damage if they're blocking. Solo Swing, good for getting away at the end, as, uh, as the other one on the, with the sword. This is the same one as uh, with the sword as well. It's waking up attacking. Useful, but uh, I don't plan on getting down. So yeah, this is a uh, from mid to high stats. Uh, mm, I like this one more than this two right here, but it's still I don't really use it much. I prefer to manually change. Sunset breeze pretty useful. Uh, from from mid to low, or oh, from mid low to to high. But yeah, I prefer to have different skills in the, uh, instead of transitions for the other chip. Tail Strike, uh, it's okay uh, for key damage, but you know, like Tail Strike is not great. Bolting Boar, really, really good for countering. Uh, you can parry Yokai with this skill. So yeah, it's really strong. If you want to parry the world, then get an Odachi. Um, yeah, just counter everything. <laughs> Crashing waves, uh, good for key damage. You know, those uh, you, uh, human enemies that uh, are blocking, you can just uh, do crashing waves to them, cheese them, pretty, be, pretty good. Charging bull, pretty good, uh, especially when you actually remove the key with this attack. Otherwise, it's pretty mad, but what you do is actually pretty good. Uh, this is uh, a counter. It's all right. Molly is now really, really damaging. The most damaging skill in uh, Odachi 3. But uh, it does have a, a pretty long animation. You can charge it up or you cannot, but uh, you know if you are going to use it, I would recommend charging it up completely. Um, and yeah, another transition attack. And yeah, that I covered pretty much all of the moves, yes. Let's get into Tomfa. Let me shrink this. 
All right, buddy. Sounds good, man. Okay, so. <clears throat> Demon Dance Heaven. And Pulverize Heaven. That's really good. Like, uh, Demon Dance Heaven, Man on Earth. Yeah. You're gonna see this skill for high, mid, and low. And it's really good to keep uh, aggression on, like to keep attacking, attacking, attacking. You can keep pulse and continue attacking. Right there. Keep pulse again, continue attacking. It's really good. Mountain Breaker, not a good skill, honestly. It can be useful, but it's not great. Urgency, pretty good. Pretty good. For spacing again. Heavenly Chain, really good. Actually, really, really good. Uh, uh, Shelf, really good as well. Uh, you can, like, use one or the other, depending on how much time you have. Uh, um, Tiger Bite, it's pretty meh. Thousand Tongues, pretty alright counter, pretty alright counter. Another counter. Dragon Slayer and Dragon Slayer 2. If you want some swag points, pretty cool. But not insanely useful in terms of a counter. Uh, Supping Kick, I th in my opinion, is a bit too long for uh, what it wants to do. I would rather have uh, some Shove or some. Yeah. I think it's better to use Shove rather than Supping Kick, but you know, depends on the situation. Uh, double kick for key damage as well, but it can be a bit awkward to actually connect. Press science is like the uh, on the dual source, the man's eye. So yeah, it's pretty good for extra iframes. Crimson Lotus, all right. Devastation, all right. If you have uh, the Gunsticks, Saratobi Gunsticks, I think they're called. Um, the they get explosion at the end of the of the tonfas, so these attacks become way better. Focus the strike, really good for spacing, even better than the urgency. Flip foot sounds pretty alright, but I haven't tested it yet, so yeah, I'll. Put that in comments eventually. Uh, um, so yeah, that's pretty much all of them. Uh, Tomfa is a really good weapon for combos. I guess I'll, I'll I'll comment on the overall impression of the each weapon later. Hatchets. If you want to throw uh, your weapons, then this is your weapon. Uh, it has a lot of skills to throw. I won't comment too much on it, especially on the throwable attacks. Because I'm, it's not my kind of weapon. I don't like throwing my weapon too much. <laughs> Lethal Barrage, pretty all right, uh, from what I remember from the from the demo, the alpha. But I didn't really use it too much. Uh, Grease Lightning, it's really good uh, for when you know you're gonna have enough time to do it. The stance is really cool, it reminds me of Zoro when he uses a uh, Rashomon. But yeah, it's not as useful as uh, Sign of the Cross, for example, from Dual Swords. Uh, Boulder Breaker, another throwing attack. Bansy Storm, throwing attack. <laughs> Gives an attack and movement speed in exchange for sacrifice and some defense, this is good. This kind of buff is really good. Arise, another waking up attack. Chain hurl. More throwing. Spinning trap. Actually pretty good. I'll comment more in the in the melee attacks pretty much. Uh, pretty good, but sometimes when the enemy, especially like is one of those that moves around quite a, quite a bit. It's, it can get really tough to actually connect that attack, so careful with that. 
mountain climber it's pretty all right i guess no, i haven't used it myself nor throwing attack while well baiting wolf rage i have used it it doesn't seem to be high, uh, like it doesn't seem to be great at actually doing what it's supposed to do I only tested it with one enemy, which is the, the boss of the, of the demo, like the human boss of the demo, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. More throwing, more throwing. So yeah, if you want to throw your weapon, this is your weapon. Another counter, this is like the uh, uh, Tonfa counter. And this is like a really weird attack, honestly, because it's like... It does like two punches. With hatchets. Weird. Another parry. Parries are good, but uh, we'll see how useful. So yeah, those are the... The skills of the dual hatchets. Not my kind of weapon. Uh, some stuff is really cool, like this thing right here but yeah not my thing so if you're like me and you like to do a lot of combos uh, while on melee uh, maybe not your weapon mm, switch glaive okay switch glaive is really good at transitioning between stances um it's kind of like the odachi but even better focus retribution it's a really long uh, charge attack but it does do quite a bit of damage so yeah if you have enough time and it can be pretty useful mortal retribution pretty good but it does like it's pretty long as well does quite a bit of uh, key damage pretty all right damage as well but it can be a bit um, dangerous in certain situations because it takes long uh, an alternative uh, yeah, an alternative uh, grapple attack, basically. It's not too useful, but it's actually pretty cool. Okay, so I haven't tested this attack, but it looks like it's really good from what I've heard. I'll keep you posted, I guess. Um, Divine Retribution, I don't personally think it's very useful. Infinite Retribution, I've been testing it and if I were to do, if I were to compare Reaper, Water Sword and Infinite Retribution 2, um, I think this one is the weakest one. So I personally don't recommend this one, this, this path right here. Okay, Merciful Retribution, it's pretty alright, shorter uh, charge attack. But, you know, not a fan of it, personally. Mine's Edge is just a, a, like a kick, but... Okay, so for that. Anyways, <clears throat> so yeah, Repraisal. Uh, this counter is a bit okay. I personally don't think it's great. I don't think you get a lot of benefit from using it. But, you know. If you want to do some swag counters, then you can use it. Blinding Edge, pretty alright. Tranquil Edge. These counters are not too great, in my opinion. Like, Switch Glaive doesn't excel at countering, pretty much. And this one can be pretty good for getting away at the end of the combo. It's like the, the one from the sword as well. Calamitous Blade. I think it's like really weird and I personally haven't, haven't used it. This one is really cool, uh, but I never got it because I have to get this one first. <laughs> it can be pretty useful, I think, if it has good enough um, damage. But yeah, I don't know how good it is. Uh, let's see, Warwind Blade, uh, I think it's a, a waste of points, <laughs> personally. 
Uh, okay, the path of three. This attack is honestly not great, but you will gonna to need it in order to get to the actual good, good stuff from the switch glaive. The transitions. You can transition uh, between like mid to uh, mid or low to high high to uh, high or low to mid and mid and high to to low and i personally use this too right here especially this one lately it's pretty good in my opinion there are good transitions and uh since it's like r1 plus uh square triangle or X, you can actually uh, do them without uh, taking place, uh, like if you want to do, for example, uh, this one, like triangle at the end of the combo, you can do it because it's not covered by uh, the same input right here. So that's good. Thinner, pretty all right. Uh, I remember using it in the beta. Spacing skill. Well, I haven't used this buff. I don't know how good it is. Yo, Sancho, what is up? And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, to sum up. Sword is really good for bonus. It has uh, damaging skills. It has counters. It has... Pretty much everything that you want, except for uh, continuous attacks. That's the only thing that it doesn't have, pretty much. Uh, spear excels at uh, human enemies, but it, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be useful against yokai. It's just less useful for yokai. Axe a lot of damage. And if you want to destroy the guard of uh, an enemy by attacking or just do a shit ton of damage, Axe has that covered. Kusarigama, uh, Reaper is just really fucking broken. Like, if you use Reaper properly, uh, you're just gonna destroy bosses. Uh, it's pretty much, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the main weapon for the speedrun. Yo, sipping. Thank Sabu you. Baby Kodama, Pepo Kodama. Baby Kodama, them, the nine moles. Of Roche. Thank you for the sub sipping. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was at this. Um, Reaper right here is going to be the main skill for the speedrun in terms of Yokai bosses. I'm pretty sure it just does a lot of key damage and it's continuous. We'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, Reaper is really strong and the other skills are pretty alright, but Kusirigama is mainly strong because of Reaper. Dual Swords. Dual Swords is my personal favorite from Neo 1. And, you know, <laughs> along with the Switch Glaive, my favorite on Neo 2. You like the celerity slice? I see. Um, you have, like, really good skills on all the stances. You can combo uh, between them really good. You have EI. You have. Uh, high damaging attacks like a uh, windstorm if you don't like windstorm you can do water sword and it's like really really good continuous damage uh, it has good uh counter like this counter for uh, all attacks pretty much and this uh parry this is the best one for humans pretty much it has extra iframes on low stands with mind's eye dual dragon is really cool as well Mortal Flow and Raijin are pretty swa, I guess. And for extra key damage, God of Wind is really good. If you basically, you can chain uh, God of Wind and Son of the Cross and just destroy humans, pretty much. You can throw in some uh, Windstorms as well. You can combine those skills and you just destroy them pretty much mm. okay for Odachi is not as damaging as the axe but it does certainly be, uh, have like more useful movesets I guess uh, 
it's uh, more agile. Uh, it has really high damaging skills like Mont Let Snow. And overall is really good. Has uh, one of the best parries in the game, if not the best parry in the game. So yeah, definitely really good. Uh, Tonfa is really good for chaining, uh, chaining attacks and different skills. Uh, you, if you go crazy with the Tonfa's, you, you're just gonna launch a lot of uh, attacks. Hatches, like I said, good for throwing attacks, and it has some melee attacks, but not as good. And Switchglaive are uh, really good for switching between the stances and doing continuous um, attacks. So yeah, that's pretty much all of the weapons and their strength. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here for now. Um, Yes, uh, I guess I'll make a second part of this uh, later. Ooh, second part. Let's see, so let's go into the status again. As you can see right there, I'm C Agility, right here. C Tagnus. Thank you for the welcome back, Calyx. So yeah, A Agility, C Tagnus. Then you have the resistances and all the stuff, you know, all the good stuff. Um, keep in mind that each stat increases uh, different things, of course, like uh, as you can see, basically everything that explains here. I'm, I'm not gonna get into details, but um, in terms of uh, what, what should you level up for your weapon, you can check it here. But keep in mind one thing. You're gonna see here like a, a, like just regular stats, but here at the end of the um, equipment, you know the armor and whatnot, you're gonna see the requirements for it. So if you want to do, if you want to equip some stuff and benefit from all the special effects that it has, you might want to look at that and uh, level up that so you can actually. Get profit from the skills you know special effects but yeah apart from that effect as you can see right here you press you press eh, if you press x on this menu you can see the effect icon list and obviously you can see all the details about what it does so you know i don't need to explain it for a guide well, yeah, you can see it right there. Yeah. Well, I will say this though. Uh, confusion status uh, is based around... Uh, basically, you see a score saturated, solidified, purified, corrupted. You need to have two of those in one enemy or on you, depending. Uh, if you want to actually uh, get confusion. So let's just say that you want to confuse a Jokai and get a uh, profit from uh, from the benefits of uh, debuffing him with confusion, then you need to do uh, fire, enough fire to debuff him with fire and he gets scorched and electrified, for example. You can do purified and saturated or anything like that. But apparently, uh, Purify and you know purity and corruptions, purity and corruption doesn't go well because um, purifying uh, removes uh, corruption and corruption removes purifying. So you know purity, yes. Yeah, and you also have the poison paralysis, you know debuffs and shit. Um, yeah, you can check everything what it does. You couldn't check this in uh, any in one, so that's a good thing that they added. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna be using the sword to show like it's like the most like basic weapon. It's not basic; it's like um, the most complete weapon, probably. Yeah, confusion is called confusion. So yeah, as you can see right there, I'm using 
the skills, I'm using the stances, different things. So right here, dodge. Getting his key low. Well, he didn't get rid of the key, but as you can see right there, grapple when he's low on key. Well, when he is out of key, you break his key, whatever. Lombo, as you can see, you can equip the bows here. You can equip all the bows, matchlock, and. Uh, yes. Um, and cannon. You get extra benefit from uh, shooting on the head, but when they have a helmet. Oh, they didn't do that in Neo 2? In Neo 1, when they have a helmet. Like, it, you couldn't, uh, like, it didn't count as a headshot, you just uh, got rid of the helmet. But I guess, I guess that's different now. <laughs> so yeah, um, this game has some inconsistency, inconsistency with, the, with the naming or certain stuff. Uh, Confusion has had many names. Uh, Discord, Confusion, uh, Chaos. Right there, and then instead of doing the grapple, you can also do this, and then do that. Uh, um, basically, instead of just doing one attack on grapple, you know, one one grapple, and that's it. You can just attack him again for good damage with that, or you know, a good attack damage, good damaging attack, and then you can just do extra damage when he's down. Pretty neat strat, honestly. Okay, so in Neo and Neo 2, you're gonna find these Kodamas. You can guide them to the shrine. They can, they can give you uh, bonuses for defeating guys. So, like you can get more elixirs, which is the healing item that I have right here. I can't use it because I'm full HP, but now I can use it because I'm not full HP. Well, now I am, but yeah. All right. So let's see if he does it. That's a paralysis pool. You can see right there. Get rid of his key and uh, they just get ready to be reposted. Okay, so this guy is a bit bigger and he can do some special attacks. Let's see if he does one. There we go. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's one thing that is... I don't think it's a mechanic. But I should comment on that. Uh, when you're out of key and... Um, you know, you're basically stunned somewhere. You can actually do a, a, a Jokai burst, you know, a burst counter to get out of it. Like, that's another thing, another reason why Feral is so good. Because you can just get away when you don't have key, you're like out of breath and stuff like that. You can just do that and then you get away. Yeah, you can see right there, you can benefit from changing attacks and not just doing the same attack over and over again. If you're not sure what, you, what to level up or you know, you know you don't have a main weapon, you can just uh, put everything uh, more or less equally and you will eventually be able to use every single equipment. Since you you would definitely meet the the minimal requirements, that's you know that's a way to go. Ah, oh, cool. 
I'm bad at shooting. He just fell with no head. And it uh, did the... Uh... Okay, there we go. That's our counter. And since I got the counter, uh, and I at the same time with that counter I, I removed the key from her, I was able to do the grapple with the... Um, with the feral yokai. So yeah, I'm just showing a bit of um, what you can do. Okay. So yeah, ninja locks. You can you can have uh, some settings. Uh, I don't know if they were like around here. Uh, basic games. Yeah. Okay. As you can see right here automatically use acquired locks of hair you can do that and uh, when you get uh, some locks of hair you'll automatically use them that didn't happen in neo one you didn't have uh, this option so yeah that's a good uh, save you know time save cool quality of life improvement so let's see now we have a skill we don't want to use it on this one this is not a useful skill this is just for swag Sword of Celerity is pretty cool, and it's actually useful. But let's see what else we can get. We can accumulate much more power with the AI quick draw, but that, you know, that's like, I'm just telling like uh, what would go through, you know, what you need to take into account. So yeah, you can do more attack, but that also means that if you're, unless you cut it shorter, you, you release it, you know, earlier, you're gonna spend more time uh, doing the AI so maybe it's not super useful. Swallow's Wing, pretty cool. You know, you can get away a bit. This is not very useful. Sweet stuff. Depends if you want to have more maneuverability or dodging more, you can go that way or you can just Keep this one. If you like this one and you don't want this one, then don't get this one. Tempest. Um, I personally don't like this kind of skills, Tempest and whatnot, are only useful against human enemies. So if you're gonna fight a good few yokai, maybe it's not that useful. Same with this and this. These are all effective against humans, but not yokai. All of these skills are only useful against humans. So, as it stands, uh, we have either Sword Celerity or Swallow Twin. And I prefer this one. But yeah. That's basically what my. what I would think, pretty much. What's the. what do I want? What I'm going to find more useful? Or what do I like to use okay so here you have uh, some ninja skills um if you don't like using to match the ninja stuff you can just aim for tiger running so you can get a sneak attack and then you can do some uh sneaky attacks uh, in the back of enemies uh, so this cliff has a unique one actually from it uh so yeah that's what i want to do and yeah, so far we cannot do anything else. Let's let's change to the switch glaive. <laughs> oh yeah, another thing that I didn't mention. Um, as you can see right here, this is my dash on uh, sword. This is my dash on switch glaive. It's not as good, right? I don't know why, but um, sword just has like better dashes. And um, what else? This is with A agility, as you can see right there. I have A agility. If I'm 
on B agility, my dashes are substantially shorter. And my key recovery is also slower. I'll do it again so you can see the key recovery. As you can see, I can move around for a bit more. Much faster. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like to keep um, A agility. But you know, if you don't mind having a bit of uh, worse uh, key recovery and you want a bit more defense, you can do that. But I would never recommend you go into yellow or, you know, C agility. That's um, a bit too bad in my opinion. <laughs> Summoner Scandal lets you summon a... Uh, if you die and um, it's on a tight spot uh, or you just want to have the, all your experience back and the spirit as well, you can use this. And Travel Labyrinth is just travels to the last shrine that you got. Useful in speedrunning sometimes. All right. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Most of the of the times, um Rather than just doing a lot of damage, that's one thing that I forgot to mention. But yeah, most of the times, rather than just doing a lot of damage right at the, st right at the start, what you want to aim for is to um, it's to uh, get rid of their key, so you can actually punish that for both yokai and human enemies. So yeah. Keep that in mind. So enemies have a weak point, like uh, this horn right here. Let's see if I can actually... Okay, right there I got... Right there, the, the horn, you saw it? I passed the horn, he took a lot of key damage, and I eventually got rid of all his key. And then I was able to to punish that. I still haven't got a touch upon the the Yokai course. Hmm, I haven't actually gotten. I think ah, uh, I almost got it. Like I would have gotten it uh, with Bunny um, earlier, but uh, I didn't actually get it. So yeah, some enemies like to do that, they leave uh, some kind of reprisal uh, when you try to punish them. So now we're in the dark realm. Um, I'm gonna show you, but your, your key recovery is way lower. If you had, um, if we had uh, some Jokai skills, they would be powered up. But that doesn't mean that because your key recovery is lower, that doesn't mean that you're in a super bad shape. You can still fight. Things only get tough when you can fight more than one enemy right here. Okay, so I'm gonna fight these guys, but normally what you would do is to, you would just drop to this crystal and break it as fast as possible. I'll, I'll do I'll do it right here, but uh, you can do a plunge attack, like you can do this on the crystal. It's just right now I want to show a bit of the combat. 
And what you can do. So this is a, a pretty tough situation where you have like, like a, a, an annoying yokai and then a, a strong yokai. So what do you do? You try to deal with the strong yokai attacks and then at the moment that uh, the weak yokai leaves himself open, then you can attack right there. And now you can focus on the strong one. I got the corn, but he's not down. And so I just counter him, and he is gonna die really soon. Also, I, I was going to charge attack, but I didn't get the charge attack. GG. So yeah, what happens if you don't want to do any of that? You don't want to deal with the enemies or anything? You can just break the crystal. Like that. <laughs> and uh, when you break the crystal, all the enemies around, just uh, on the dark realm, this one right here. Like, you won't always find the crystal. Sometimes you will have to fight. I forgot to mention that. But yeah, in this situation, this crystal basically uh, kills all the enemies in, in the dark realm. Well, not all of the enemies. Here you have a, a Nureon. There we go. So yeah, Nureon can paralyze you. And this is a Yokai weapon, so now I can talk about this thing right here as well. <laughs> Miss Nick. Okay, so let's talk about magic first though. So we have fire, water, lightning, and purification. What do I think about the Switch Blade? The Switch Blade is really good. Okay, so what happened? Why do we only have fire? water, lightning, and purification. What happened with the corruption? Well, the corruption is not a spell. It's the only uh, element, so to speak, that's not uh, a spell. So normally, in terms of which one do you want, I would say purification is the one that you're gonna be using the most in terms of buffs, if you want to do that. But you also need to take into account where you're going. Okay, so if you get this, you can next get one of these things. You can get another uh, buff right here. What happened to Earth and Wind? Well, Earth and Wind got uh, wrecked uh, because uh, now we have Privation and, and Corruption. But yeah. Um, Obviously, there's uses for the other elements, but the most useful, I think, we'll see on the full game, but so far, from what I've seen in the demos, the most useful one is Purification by far. And then, one of the other things that is really useful, both uh, speedrun-wise and casually, it's a Barrier Talisman, also known as Kekai in Neo 1. It boosts your uh, kit recovery, and it's really good. What else do we have? We have uh, Carnage right here, which is basically a buff. I've been testing and it looks like it's a bit uh, weaker this time than uh, Summer Twilight. Um, I'm not sure, the, the, the damage seems uh, like the, they change between uh, the same per yeah, they, they, they change the percentage of increase depending on what kind of attack it is and what damage it does. So we'll see how what happens in the full game, but uh, overall it seems like it's weaker than Summer Twilight, for example, from the Kusarigama, the buff, but definitely stronger than uh, Power Pill uh, from the Ninja Tree. You also have weakness over here to the, reduce the defense of the enemy. 
Taliban of the, of the fist if you want to fist some people instead of uh, just doing weapons and stuff and an actual moveset and one thing that I would not recommend to use is this uh, a sloth is it takes away everything that's fun from the game I don't know why this still exists but I would never recommend you using this um, if you're if you're using this just to just to complete the game I don't know man I I, I don't think you're you have the right moms, mindset for this game okay this is I, I honestly don't know what they were thinking by, by adding sloth it's really bad this new still uh, skill tree makes sense when it comes to how you unlock anything yeah basically you see these lines right here this tells you what you need in order to uh, acquire that you know th that line is like oh you need you need this thing in order to get this and in order to get this thing you need this and this so yeah we're gonna get purification Uh, I was talking also about the power pills that are right here. Uh, they have like, I would say it's around a 10%, between a 5 and a 10%. It depends on what kind of attacks you're doing, apparently. Because I've been testing different attacks and it, it, it has different uh, buffs depending, or you know, different percentage buff uh, in damage depending on the attack. Um, but yeah. Uh, it can be also useful with the uh, antitoxin pill for poison and uh, let's see helm no no uh, uh, where is it what was it there's another one for the paralysis Medicine. There's there's a medicine. Oh here. Here th this one this one uh, it gets rid of the paralysis. Still want to level up stat. Oh no, uh, on your on your magic points are you uh, you get okay okay I should I should mention this actually. Thank you for that uh, MP. So. You get all of the all of the skill points, apart from oh, there are two exceptions: samurai skill points and shiflin skill points that you get from leveling up and uh, other stuff. But basically, from all the weapons, you only get skill points by using them, unless they actually add some uh, uh, locks for the weapons. Uh, but ninja and omnia magic. The, you don't get the skill points by leveling up magic or dexterity or, or anything like that. You're gonna get those points by using locks and using ninjutsu and uh, magic, depending on which one. So when I buff my weapon with uh, purification, for example, and I hit things with it, then I'll, I'll, I get uh, proficiency with magic and I get the skill points for magic. Okay. So I'm gonna get this uh, path of three for the switch glide. Okay, so as you can see right there, it was like purification, you know, purity, fire, water, and lightning, right? But there's also corruption, and this weapon right here, imbue corruption. We're gonna be using this for a bit, and as you can see right here, uh, right on top of the on the stances and uh, you know where where the weapon icon is i'm gonna change it right now this thing right here there's a bar and that bar fills up when you hit enemies and when it fills up it buffs the weapon with corruption and you're gonna see one cool thing about it Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but those are those are basically the the ninjutsu <coughs> and um, and magic things. 
you basically use them to get proficiency with it. Mm. So as you can see right here, I by leveling up a bit more, I got samurai points. I'm gonna use it all for flux too to recover more key and shifting points. Uh, I won't comment too much on this, but I think one of the most useful ones is this two right here. Reduces the penalty to your key recovery speed while in the Joker realm and especially on the Dark realm. That's really useful. And then here you have some restoring uh, HP with, with uh, grappling on Joker shift and whatnot. That's also pretty useful, I think. So yeah, I would go this way. These ones are not as useful, I think. But you know, we'll see. I'm gonna get this. <laughs> yeah, I think by using items you can also get uh, the skill points for it. Um, I can I can use this. One moment. Let's see. As you can see right there, I was using the fire item, you know, the, the thing. And because of it, I got... Um, Proficiency with magic, since uh, fire buff is a magic thing. Even though it's an item, I got uh, proficiency from it. <coughs> oh, come on. Oh yeah, these enemies uh, like to eat their partners. I should probably heal. see right here I gained a new ability why because the sentient meter I think it's called filled up so now on strong attacks at the end of the combo I gained uh, a flying slash attack it only works so at the end of the combo of uh, strong attacks so yeah Oh, come on. There we go. Yes. So, okay. This thing right here. The feral counter, as you can see, I was, I had 10, uh, 10 out of 10 of the purple bar, which is the animal bar. And now I have 9 out of 10. It consumes one. So if you don't have one anima, you know, one anima bar, um, you, you are not going to be able to counter it. And absorbing those things right there, uh, the thing that I just absorbed, the yokai cord, the soul course replenishes your uh, your anima gauge and um, also attacking enemies gives you anima 
Okay, so this uh, enemy is pretty annoying. I don't like it. As you can see right there, I was able to recover faster. Because of the feral counter. Oh yeah, another thing, you get uh, proficiency when you're in the, in the Joker realm. Like, not in the Joker, in the Joker shift, in the Joker form, basically, on your equipped weapon. So even though you're not technically using the Switchglaive in this, in, in this case, uh, by using the grapple attack on on the Joker shift, uh, I I got proficiency, enough proficiency to get um, a skill point for the Switch Glaive. All right, so yeah, this typical shortcut. I'm just trying to to go through like uh, as many details as possible in terms of. Um, what you want to take into account when playing if you want a full guide or you know compre comprehensive guide of um, kind of uh, uh, not necessarily how to play but uh, one of the of course there's not one right moveset and uh, not moveset uh, mindset but um, I'm giving you this one as an example of um, of a moveset that I would consider moveset. Uh, what is it moveset? Uh, mindset that I would consider pretty good with this game. Okay, so right there. Does that enemy notice me, senpai? So I yeah. If I were to fight this guy with that guy as well, uh, that would be pretty rough. Okay, so this is a Yoki. He has two. In it, in, like, Yoki have different weapons. This one has the dual swords. But he can also have like one sword. He can have... Uh, oh, fuck. He can have a Kusarigama. Oh, yeah. They gave him that, that attack that is really fast, and it's like sometimes I, I find it a bit hard to react to. It's okay. That's what I get for messing around too much. Horns are harder to break. Um, I don't know. Okay, now he broke his corn, his horn right now. Yes. Right, okay. So I was able to counter that as well. Okay, so we're gonna bring back this thing right here. Okay. So right here, I'm just gonna tell you this because um, you might miss it. But uh, there's some enemies called Nurikabe, which are basically just walls. Kabe means wall, by the way. And 
Normally you would find something like this, trusted that binary candidate for his friendly behavior. So what that means is that you can either fight this guy or you can just do one of these three types of gestures. This is friendly, this is neutral, and this is aggressive. So that guy died because of his friendly behavior. So now we're gonna go neutral and see what happens. He didn't like that. So we're just gonna do a back click. And he likes that. And he can like he lets you go. If um, you have two chances, if you fail it the second time, um, yeah, usually it's near the wall, yes. Um, sometimes there's no hint, though. Uh, if you fail it two times, or you just don't want to do that, you can just fight him. If you fail it two times, he's just gonna fight you. Okay, so this enemy... Oh, okay, I didn't do it properly. All right. What's with the one coin thing? Bottom right, left, Ramrita. I think that's the soul cores that I have. I'm not sure actually. That wasn't a thing in the in Neo One. I think it's the soul cores that I have. I don't know if you can check it. I'm not sure. I think it is. Okay, so another rat. This uh, this element that he's doing right now, or ailment, is the um, what is it called? Like a um, pestilence or something like that. Basically, I'm gonna show it right now while it uh, lasts, but I'm gonna heal, and it's gonna make me puke like that. So you will heal for less, and you will also have that animation. So yeah, if you can avoid healing, then then do that while you have that debuff. Um, I think I got something. Oh damn. Nice. Why didn't I have this before? I, I didn't get any of that. <laughs> okay, so there's some more crystals right here. And by breaking these crystals that you can buy here, uh, you might have heard before. Uh, I defeat some enemies. Uh, those enemies are just gone now. Um, it's a common mechanic in... in uh, in Neo 1 and 2, it seems, uh, where enemies, some enemies are tied to crystals, and by getting rid of those crystals, uh, you basically destroy the enemies as well. Okay, so I, I want to have a charging bull instead. So instead of having Waking Winds, I'm gonna say, uh, no, I want Charging Bull. But what if I want the, the other one? Then you can change it here. You can go to Mid Stance. And instead of uh, Charging Bull, you can do, no, I want Heaven right here. Or I want Earth. And you can do that. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna speed it up a bit more now that I covered pretty much um, a lot of uh, mechanics.
Yeah, over here there were some enemies, and since I got rid of the crystals, they are not there anymore. Let's use the axe a bit. So you, so you can see how strong it is. That's how strong the axe can be. Well, not, not that it can be, that's like how it starts, pretty much. Yeah, like I'm making a guide right now, uh, EMP. Or like some kind of a guide. So I'm like talking more about, about like people from who would be hearing this, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make it for this one and maybe the the boss the, the, the other boss I mean So yeah, I'm gonna rush a bit more skip some enemies as well or pretty much all the enemies you will know when uh, when you cannot skip enemies well yeah I, I'll, I should show you guys um, this thing right here okay so sneak attack. Sneak attack, uh, sneak attack in general has the same animation, maybe with some slight differences uh, depending on the weapon. But in general, has the same animation as the grapple attack, except for the switch glaive. With the switch glaive, this happens. So as you can see, there's a few enemies, there's the rag, Dark Realm, and maybe we don't want to deal with all of this shit. So let me go ahead and use the axe again. So yeah, this enemy is pretty annoying, really powerful, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna use this. So yeah, it got rid of the dark realm, and this this is right here. You didn't see it, but then it was locked behind the, you know, by the dark realm. It was like corrupted or something. Uh, so by getting rid of the dark realm. Uh, I was able to actually um, access this shrine. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna ask chat, what weapon do you guys want to see? I'll use any weapon for the boss. Hatchets. All right, so we're gonna use hatchets. Haven't gotten any skills for the hatchets, but we're gonna do it anyways. I'll get something. Yeah, this one, whatever. Uh, 
And I'm gonna actually uh, go here, ready jutsu. And ready some purification talismans. Can also raise some tiger running, I guess. Because why not? Alright. So, hatchets. My least favorite weapon, or no, not my least favorite, my least favorite is Kusarigama. Uh, but definitely one of the ones that I don't really use much and I find pretty awkward. So yeah, he's, uh, he has the purification debuff right now. Again. Counter. You you always have some uh, time to to do some attacks after countering. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. Now, oh, what's the my end. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. He got rid of it. Easy club. And that's how you bring down a boss. Weapon type is, uh, do I think, is really, really good in this demo? Uh, in what regard? Because all of them, casually, all of them, uh, depending on your playstyle. Making the game easier. Um, I mean, if you just spam Reaper, it's pretty easy, I guess. 
I mean, it depends. It just depends. Good beginner weapon. Uh, I I would say like any weapon can be a begin a good beginner weapon. Honestly, I seen people like maybe well I guess except for the Tomfa. Tomfa is it's a bit harder for beginners, I think. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I think that's gonna be it for the for the gameplay part of it. Um, that's also like the blacksmith and whatnot. Uh, I can explain it a bit. The usual buying and selling, you know, nothing too special. Forging, you need materials to forge different weapons. You also need the um, the what is it called? Um, Yeah, new blacksmith wife, yes. Uh, you also need the the actual thing to to do it. I can I can remember. Uh, blueprints, yes, the blueprints for the weapon and armor. You also for tools and whatnot. Pretty self-explanatory. So matching. Okay, so let's say you want to so much. Let's let's just say you really would like the the sword, you know. And you want to bring it to a higher level. And this is like level 5, right? So you think, oh man, maybe I can sacrifice this Legion Spear. But then you would realize that it doesn't actually increase the level, like in Neo 1. And it's because in Neo 2, at least on this demo, uh, you need uh, the same rarity or higher in order to... Uh, to use uh, another weapon as a material to level up your weapon So yeah, right here this heavyweight axe is purple And it would actually uh, You know, it's compatible with uh, Demon's Maul right here purple Same with the Fumaku Sarigama But not the Brigand Hatches because that's lower rarity So yeah, I don't know why they decide to do it, but yeah Basically, you you make, as you can see right here, these are high rarities and it works. It doesn't work with this because it's low rarity. But yeah, um, that's basically soul matching. You use your other stuff to level up your main stuff or the thing that you want to level up. You also have the refashion. You can change the appearance of things. Pretty self-explanatory. Like for example, you can say, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be easier with the armor. Um, you see, okay, I want to use the exosic hat, but it looks like shit. So I'm gonna do this and then copy the appearance for the long wolf hood, which looks way better. So I refashion it and now it looks like the other one. So now I can go to the equipment and get the exorcist hat, which is higher level and it gives me better stuff, but it doesn't look like shit now. So that's good. Astral Wisdom? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, so you used to have reforging and now it's just tempering. 
I actually haven't messed around with this. So let me mess around with it a bit. Um, actually, not with the uh, focus. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, you also have the dojo in case you want to uh, do some practice and stuff. Um, just you know, useful stuff. If you if you don't know what you're doing wrong, if like you're not familiar with some mechanics, you can do that. But yeah, let me go to my main file for this. And I'll finish this uh, guide, so to speak. Only 38 minutes left of the demo for the hunts. Okay, so let's go to the blacksmith again. Let's see if I can temper stuff. So let's see, I like, yeah, let's see, uh, yeah, okay, so I have the Jizumaru Sunetsugu and the Withered Bone and Bleached Twig, yes, and then I want to temper them, there's like, oh them, I, I wanna... I want better skills for this. So instead of blocking on critical, I say, mm, I don't like that. And I'm gonna change it to, Midgard, Midgard Keys of Conception, or Paralysis Accumulation Enemy, or whatnot. As you can see what it does here. You can do that. Or you can do this. You can change this into, instead of attack bonus courage, which I would recommend, this kind of stuff is really good. You can say, oh, I want more backstab ma damage, or I want uh, mortal flow to be uh, more mortal, you know? You can also do that. I don't really mess around with this too much. But yeah, you can do it. Just cause reasons. And then you can change it again. And after that, there's only one more thing to explain, apart from the Tory Gate is pretty self-explanatory, it's just co-op stuff. But um, let's go with minus soul scores, okay? So we have a tuned soul score, a soul core that's pretty self-explanatory. You just attune the, the soul core to do whatever you want. And uh, they have different atonements and whatnot. So fusion, you basically use uh, other like you basically like for example this this mizuki so core level 25 i used a few of the of the other ones uh as a material to increase the soul core rank and it gets stronger so right here for example if i say uh i say remove from all uh, garden spirits because i want to use it as material right so I got Soul Fusion, and I say this is level 24, therefore I want this one to consume the other one, right here. And it's stronger, it's slightly stronger, but yeah. You basically absorb the other ones with that. Resting Rights is basically, oh, I already have this one that's 25, and the other ones are like the same one, but it's like use, useless for me, because I don't really need it. Then I can just uh, select this two that I don't need and 
Yes, I get all their stuff. Same with this Escampos. No. Uh, should have an Enki. Yeah. So I have this Enki, so called level 22. So I'm gonna get rid of this too. And I get Enki Pelt and whatnot. So yeah, pretty useful to get rid of uh, those, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and anything else is something that you should uh, learn yourself, I guess. Uh, you can find some uh, hidden stuff in the map. I found it randomly in the in the beta, uh, but it appears to not be random in this uh, location here. But yeah, there's some uh, stuff on the in the map. Sometimes you can have fun with that as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, anything else is just experience. So yeah. Uh, Good luck with learning Neo 2, you know, Neo and Neo 2. Uh, this is mainly for Neo 2, but, uh, you know, most of the things can also be used on Neo 1. It's just that the new me mechanics are not there and some stuff is changed. But basically the, the, the overall thing for skills and whatnot is uh, pretty much the same. So yeah, good luck and enjoy Neo 2. See ya.